Hey everybody, Countdown VHS here with another update for Wayne Rider Wednesday, or to cut out the middleman, Wayne's Day, as it is sometimes called at the Discord. Unfortunately, I can't take credit for that appellation myself that belongs to Thorion, so thanks to him for the clever work with that. But today we are looking at the north. We have not been this far north in any of these campaign map updates, and we're starting off with a bang looking at Angmar. Now, the first thing I want to say is that this faction, in terms of the UI, uh, takes after the middlemen. You may think of the factions in Wayne Riders as split up into different culture, different culture groups. And Angmar was a bit of a, an unusual one in that it draws from the middleman culture that is common to the Aeotheod. Those would be the, uh, the losers in the initial Wayne Rider invasion. Other middlemen factions include the Black Forest tribes and the chiefdom of the Angren, who we will see later. Uh, but this represents a population that is very rarely uh, discussed or takes central stage. Now, the reason that we chose this for Angmar is that we imagine the native people from this area must have been middlemen. There would not have been a huge rebellious Dunedainic population in Angmar. All it says about the inhabitants was that there were evil men gathered to them, and we do know that there was a significant hillman element in Rudaur, although the length that that hillman element lasted as a significant power uh, was probably actually very short. But suffice it to say, Angmar is not a Dunedainic power. It is sort of its own thing but needing to group it with some other faction in terms of culture, in terms of mechanics, we thought it made more sense to emphasize uh, the, the middle manish, the native men of Angmar and Rudaur, if you will. The other thing you'll notice about this campaign map structure or the campaign start for Angmar is that they take up actually a lot of territory uh, all the way in the east, stretching on the eastern side of the Misty Mountains. This is the area that would later become Framsburg, right? This is before the Aeotheod move north and settle here. And initially the Aeotheod are somewhere down uh, further down the middle stretches of the Anduin, but Angmar does have a presence here. And this would, in fact, be the last element of Angmar to survive. After the fall of the Witch King in 1975, I think a year or two later, you would have, uh, who was it? Was it Fram? No, From? One of those guys. Fromgar, I think, was the name of the chieftain of the Aeotheod who led his people north after the fall of Angmar and drove out the last few folk of Angmar from this place. Of course, that is some hundred plus years in the future, the start date of our mod, and so the men of Angmar are going to be rather strong in this region. On the other side, though, we start to get into Angmar proper. We've got some settlements here just to the west, sort of, of uh, Mount Gundabad, and then Karn Doom itself, the capital. Now, I would like to zoom in a little bit because we do have a unique settlement model for this, as you can see. It is, uh, it is sort of a kind of gray stone, very imposing, and rather uniform-looking uh, settlement, which is rather fitting, I think. Yes, yeah, so if we actually hover over Karn Doom here, it, you can sort of make out the buildings perhaps a little bit better. Hard to find a perfect spot to put the mouse. Uh, but at any rate, there's lots of stone in this structure. There seems to be a significant element of men who know what they're doing in terms of building uh, in Angmar. These are the people, I believe, who are responsible for building the old fortresses in the hills that Frodo and Strider and company see as they're making their way towards Rivendell in the Fellowship of the Ring. These are builders in the hills, workers of sorcery, and so they must have been the type of folks who could put together a settlement as imposing as this. But Karn Doom, of course, is not the major settlement type. In terms of settlement types, we are once again looking at Middle Manish style settlements for the most places. So this is stuff that you would actually be uh, seeing over in Rovanion when we looked at the Western Horde. Since they had moved into what were essentially Northman style settlements, you'd expect the same kind of structures over here. Lots of wooden buildings, fairly open settlement plans with not a lot of uh, streets, roads, those types of things. Uh, but again, the land of Angmar uh, consists of many settlements, and so they're going to be in a very good position to threaten Arnor to the southwest. Now, apart from Karn Doom and these other Middle Manish style settlement types that we've seen so far in the north, as we move south in Angmar, you will see more Dunedainic style settlements. And this is because these are areas that were traditionally settled by Dunedain. This is once part of Arnor, of course. And uh, these are the regions of, of Rudaur, 
and adjacent territories. So over here, we've got a settlement Tardal, which uses that Dunedainic settlement model. We do have another Middlemanish settlement model over here in Hitlad. And at the, uh, the crossing of the, the Great East Road, I believe it is, uh, going over from Weathertop somewhere over here, all the way over towards Rivendell, uh, we have this permanent fort. This is not a full-fledged settlement. Uh, Meduant, I guess, the name of this one. Uh, this is just here to basically command the crossing. However, it should be noted that this is not the only crossing on this river and not the only way in to Rudaur. Uh, we have gone a little bit further here in terms of adding crossings and passes and things like that to add just a, a few more options for mo mobility, both for the player and for the AI. And so one of the fe factors of that uh, is to be seen up here, right at the upper stretches or the source of the river where there is another crossing right about here. And I really like this because after looking through Appendix A in the history of Angmar, it becomes clear that a force of Angmar uh, passes down into Rudaur and then crosses the bridge, crosses the river, and then attacks uh, Arthedane, I guess, at that point. I think this is 1356 or 1409, one of those big campaigns. Now, there would be no reason for the army of Angmar to cross this bridge, right? If they just came down from Karn Doom, they could hit Arthedain. They could attack them pretty much by heading straight southwest towards Fornost. But no, it seems what they do is they move down into Rudaur, gather forces there from their allies, the hillmen, who have basically taken over rule, and then cross the bridge. Uh, with their improved forces. So that means there must have been a crossing up here. So we've reflected that in the mod. That also means it's another crossing to guard, right? It's another thing to watch out for if you are playing Angmar to make sure that, it, you know, if you lose these territories to elves, let's say, or, uh, or your rival to the southwest, uh, Arnor, uh, that you will have to potentially watch for an army coming up from the south, or vice versa, if you somehow lose these territories in the north and you're holding out in Rudaur, uh, that you may have a crossing over here. But it's another, another choke point uh, to protect. Of course, a very interesting factor about this map is that Rivendell will be occupied, of course, by an actual faction. So you will have to watch your back if you're playing Angmar and you're focusing, as you no doubt should be, on taking out Arnor and Arthedain. You'll also have to contend with the High Elves who will have a, uh, a settlement right here, very, very close to your heartlands. So this may make a, uh, a very strong early choice uh, as a target. In addition, you'll have, of course, the High Pass right about here. You'll have forces already on the eastern side of the Misty Mountains, and so it may make sense to secure some of this territory, some of these rebel settlements, and maybe some of the Orc holds in the region as well. Not all of them, however, will be rebel-held. There is uh, Gundabad itself, which actually does have an Orcish army standing outside it currently, and uh, this settlement is in the possession of the Misty Mountain Orcs. These will be an ally to Angmar initially in the campaign. This may not be a permanent alliance. It may be a permanent alliance. We haven't quite determined exactly how that's going to work. Uh, but initially, at any rate, we do want Angmar and the Orcs to be allied. The Orcs are going to have a presence, of course, right around here, down in some Orcish holds a little bit further south, and then stretching eastward into the Grey Mountains. And so there may be some ways in which you can benefit each other uh, by making sure that you've got some targets, that they've got some targets to attack, and so on. Uh, but there may be an opportunity for conflict because, of course, getting your troops from this side of the mountains to this side, uh, even though you've got an ally here, they may kind of mess up your plans occasionally, and you may just decide it's easier to take over some of their territory yourself. Certainly seems very in character for the Witch King to, uh, you know, usurp his allies once he has no further use for them, as seems in fact to have happened with the poor hillmen who took over in Rudaur. However, once you've secured Rivendell and made sure that no other enemies are likely to come up the flank of the Misty Mountains, once you've got a pretty secure hold of the passages of the Misty Mountains to the north, uh, you've got a lot of river crossings over here and ways to defend. Uh, the, the stage should be well set for you to push further west into Arnor and deal the final blow to your great rival. That, of course, is going to be the major goal for Angmar, uh, but it's kind of interesting to think about the ways you might go about it. 
Once again, as in keeping with the other uh, updates that you've seen so far, we've got a more active map in terms of, I think, terrain types, uh, but especially in foliage and tree cover in the north. It's a little more forested up here than you may remember, and that may play well with some of the units that Angmar can train. Some of these will be orcs. Uh, a lot of these are going to be men, of course. Uh, one very interesting feature of Angmar's uh, Manish population is that I think all of their units will have a combat bonus in the snow to sort of reflect one of the things that we know about the Witch King, the Lossoth, the, uh, the ice men of Forochel, the snowmen of Forochel rather, uh, referred to the Witch King almost as though he was a personification of the winter. They say, uh, you know, when spring comes again or when the Witch King goes home, uh, that, that was sort of a, a symbol for, for spring. To reflect that, the idea that there's this, uh, th th this control he has over the cold, uh, one easy way to do that is to give his soldiers a bonus in the winter. As we know, indeed, uh, that in the climactic battle, I think in the 1974 invasion of Angmar, when Angmar attacked and basically dealt the death blow to, uh, to Arthodyne and Arnor, uh, that was fought before the winter was over. They made a sort of a sudden attack uh, in the winter time. But speaking of winter, let's go ahead and advance the, uh, the game a turn just to see what that snow cover may look like. All right, we're one turn ahead in the winter of Third Age 1864. And yeah, pretty respectable snow cover all over the north, as you would imagine. Uh, it goes all the way, well, well south into Dunland. And so we've got, we've got a lot of potential snow. Now, some of this is going to be less deep, of course, than others, like down here uh, in Cardolan territory. The snow looks a little darker, a little less deep than it is further in the north. Uh, but you have all sorts of scope for getting into uh, shenanigans with your combat bonuses in the snow. So really, in, in a lot of ways, uh, seasons are going to be very important to Angmar in, in a way that they aren't for the vast majority of factions who just, you know, you want to avoid certain types of weather, I suppose, but don't really give too much thought as to whether you attack on a particular year based on the actual season. Well, I'd say that concludes our look at Angmar, a first look into the north uh, for the mod Total War Wayne Riders being developed for Rome Total War's Alexander expansion, the original, not the remaster. As a reminder, we will have updates on the mod every Wednesday for the foreseeable future as we look at various aspects of the campaign map, see how these campaign map developments are coming along, and uh, see if there are any other mechanics updates or battle map updates or anything that we feel like discussing on that given week. So let us know what you might like to see, what you're interested in finding out more about, and we'll see if we can get a little quick update on that setup for you. Thank you very much for watching, and until the next one, take care.